Hi there and welcome to this short presentation detailing my building of the 1 350th scale Hobby Boss French pre-dreadnought Voltaire. This is very much a from the box review designed to just give you an idea of what you're taking on if you decide to have a go at this particular kit. Named after the 18th century French writer and philosopher, the Voltaire was one of five Danton-class battleships laid down in 1907-08 and completed in 1911. With only four 12-inch guns as main armament, they were clearly pre-dreadnoughts, but they were well armoured for the time and did useful if unspectacular work during the Great War. Voltaire was struck by two torpedoes incidentally in 1918, but managed to get home safely. She remained on the French Navy list until 1935, finally being broken up in 1939. A few years ago, even the very idea that a kit such as this would be released by a mainstream manufacturer would have been considered absurd. How times have changed. Now, we not only have all the Danton class battleships released, but also their nearest Royal Naval contemporaries, the Lord Nelson class. Previously, Warships of this era, to the extent they were covered at all, were only available in kit form from the resin manufacturers. And whilst the quality of these kits was often excellent, the nature of their production meant retail prices were very high. Now, thanks to Hobby Boss, these intriguing subjects are available to all. On first opening the box, the large number of parts and the relative complexity of the kit is obvious. This is clearly going to be a fairly demanding project. The instruction booklet was well done and easy to use though, which was a good start. A problem I've had throughout this project was a lack of any detailed, reliable drawings of the ship itself, which makes commenting on absolute accuracy a bit difficult, so I hope you'll excuse me for not saying very much about this. The photo etch provision in the kit is very good, better than I expected actually. As you can see it's very extensive and the quality is good. The addition of the anchor chain is another positive. I don't think any aftermarket extras are going to be needed here. Not shown in the picture but worth a mention is the colour painting guide. It looks very nice but has some very strange suggestions about suitable colours for the model and really needs treating with caution. First job is to complete the hull and main decks. Hull halves are clean mouldings and go together well, although there's no provision for a waterline option if that's what you want. The two-piece main deck and quarter deck are fitted next. They're a tight fit but okay and only a tiny bit of filling was required to complete the job. The bilge keels fit well but need careful positioning to get the correct run along the length of the hull. There are raised guidelines there to help with this though. Propellers and shafts are fitted at this stage, according to the instructions, although I actually left the propellers off until the end. I painted the lower hull using my favourite Holford's red plastic primer, also adding the boot topping and weathered the area with various dark powders. Now is the time to do this while you can easily invert the hull before any top hamper is added. Incidentally, the colour of the underside of French battleships of this period is a bit of a moot point. The Hobby Boss colour guide shows full views painted in the standard anti-fouling red, as I've done here, but there's also some evidence that it could have been a shade of dark green. You have to make your own call on that one. Contrary to the instructions, I fitted the deck rail at this point. I find it easier to do this before the ship is complete. The whole hull above the boot topping and all the deck areas were primed with Hulford's grey plastic primer. For the top colour I used a 50-50 mix of Revel Matte 43 and Humbrol Matte 34. The deck on the real ship was not wood planked but was covered with linoleum secured by brass strips. I found the best colour for this was Vallejo model colour 70983 Flat Earth. Once the painting is complete, it's a good idea to do the weathering as well before too many more parts are added and the job gets more difficult. 
An area where heavier weathering is appropriate is on the foredeck where the anchor chains are. The chains are provided as metal items and before fitting them I treated them with AK's photo etch burnishing solution. Two applications turned the chains to a convincing dark gunmetal grey and meant they could be installed without having to be painted. You can see on the left the picture of the quarter deck how cluttered things are becoming and this is still only the earlier stages of the build. The etched brass gun port covers need careful positioning and there's a lot of them. A tool I found very useful for this was a wax pencil which I bought a couple of years ago but hadn't used until now. It looks just like a white pencil crayon and can be sharpened like one but the lead is actually wax. This is just tacky enough to pick up delicate parts and greatly helps with accurate placement. Most of the deck fittings go on without much trouble. I pre-painted them before fitting and also did the weathering, much easier that way than after the delicate parts are in place. A lot of delicate work takes place at this stage and patience is definitely a virtue. The photo etch bits are well designed and generally fit very well. One problem I did come across during the course of this work was fitting the aft communications platform that sits at the base of the mainmast. You can see this in the picture on the right. The platform is held up by a little forest of spindly poles which have no firm points of attachment either to the platform or the deck it stands on. After a number of failed attempts I constructed a jig to hold the platform in place while inserting poles made from plastic rod into pre-drilled holes in the deck. I built the bridge structure and shelter deck as a single unit before attaching them to the model. Constructing the eight turrets is a simple enough job, although two issues are apparent. The first is that the sighting hoods on the turret tops are one of the few instances in this kit of a poor fit. They need some trimming and filling to get them right. The other problem is that the blast bags, which should be at the base of the barrel where it enters the turret, have been missed off, even though they're clearly visible in all the photos I have of the real ship. These could be fabricated in various ways, but as this was a from-the-box build, I left things as they were. Funnels next, which presents something of a challenge. Assembling the plastic parts is fine, but adding the brass is not easy, particularly the intricate funnel caps. Some careful bending and forming is required. Just to make things worse, there are five sets to do. This really was a tricky and time-consuming job, but the end results are very satisfying and, once completed, there is the comfort of knowing that the hardest part of the build is over. The funnels were painted and weathered before being added to the model. The funnel caps being painted with Vallejo 70995 German Grey. My first use of the kit decal sheet took place at this point as I used the two white bands that go round the first funnel. These need trimming to length as they're too long if used straight from the sheet but once that was done they went on well, responding to the usual Microsol Microset treatment. The masts are well detailed and finely moulded, almost to scale, which is unusual on a plastic kit. The downside with this is that they're rather spindly and need careful handling. I managed to break off one of the yards from the main mast and had to replace it with a length of stretch sprue. The last major task on this project is the addition of the large number of boats. These are actually probably the weakest part of the kit, well enough moulded in themselves but really needing some photo etching to improve the detail. Another boat related issue comes with the four whalers mounted on davits to either side of the ship. The davits are very good with beautifully represented hooks but the boats have nothing through which these hooks can be put. I made tiny eyes from the finest wire I could find, fixed these in the boats and then hooked them onto the davits. This was a fiddle, but worth it as it got the boats to hang just as I wanted. Finally, the addition of the boat cranes. The cranes themselves are good, 
with etched ladders and delicate hook attached, but the overall appearance is ruined by a surprisingly crude rendition of the cabling, which is simply represented as a plastic bar. This was replaced with stretched sprue, one of my few departures from my from the box build. The final job is to add some rigging. I began by replacing the fore and aft jack stays with brass wire. The plastic items in the kit are commendably thin but very weak in consequence. No rigging information is included in the kit, so photos have to provide the necessary information. I never try to include all the rigging on a warship model, mainly because it can very easily look overdone. I try to do just enough to add extra interest and enhance the appearance without ever trying to add everything. A final touch is to add the flags provided in the kit decal sheet. In conclusion, this was a very intensive build, taking only six weeks, which is something of a personal record. Only at the end, when I had time to collect my thoughts and reflect, did I realise what a really good kit this is, and what excellent value for money. It has some issues, which I've identified, but there can be no doubting its overall quality. Maybe not an easy build, but with sufficient time and effort a very good model can result. I try to avoid hype and superlatives in my features, but this has got to be one of the best off the shelf, from the box ship kits I've ever built. Thank you for watching this, hope you find it useful, and I look forward to you joining me again in the future. Thank you.